Hello, this is Vivian Chu. I will be talking about infective endocarditis. This is the module on culture-negative endocarditis. The learning objectives for this module are to identify the etiologies for culture-negative endocarditis, to examine alternative diagnostic methods for identifying the causative microorganism in infective endocarditis. These include serologies, valve histology, and gene sequencing. And finally, to identify mimickers of infective endocarditis. Although blood cultures remain the central feature leading to the diagnosis of infective endocarditis, there are certain entities that can cause infective endocarditis, but that are difficult or impossible to identify with standard blood culture systems. This must be distinguished from negative blood cultures because of prior antibiotic therapy and mimickers of infective endocarditis. These are the top reasons for blood culture negative endocarditis. The first is prior antimicrobial therapy. Antibiotics for even just 24 hours can cause blood cultures with some organisms to be negative. Fastidious organisms are those that have complex nutritional requirements to grow or that cannot be grown with standard blood cultures. Emerging, undefined, and difficult to culture microorganisms can cause culture negative infective endocarditis. And finally, there are several mimickers of infective endocarditis that are not infections and therefore are not infective endocarditis. Prior antibiotic use can inhibit the growth of the pathogen such that it does not grow in the blood culture. Use of antibiotics must be elicited from the patient when taking a careful history. There are several fastidious microorganisms, that is, organisms that have a complex nutritional requirement to grow, and uncultivable microorganisms those that cannot or are difficult to grow on routine cultures. Examples of bacteria in this category include Abiotrophia, Bartonella, Brucella, and others listed here. Fungal organisms are classically difficult to grow in routine blood cultures. Candidate infection is often seen in patients who have been on prolonged antibacterial therapy or who have intravascular catheters or devices. Aspergillus infective endocarditis is uncommon, but typically occurs in the setting of cardiac surgery. Aspergillus invades the blood vessel wall and importantly does not appear in the bloodstream. Therefore, it is impossible to grow in blood cultures. Endemic fungi such as histoplasma, blastomyces, and coccidioides can also cause infective endocarditis in rare cases. The purpose of this table is to give you exposure to some of the less common causes of infective endocarditis. You do not need to memorize the ones that are listed here and that are not part of your regular course material. Serologies can be used to diagnose some of the pathogens that are difficult to grow in blood cultures. Examples of pathogens typically diagnosed by serologies include Coxiella, Bartonella, and Brucella, as well as Mycoplasma, Chlamydia, and Legionella. The serologic techniques and cutoff values are listed here for your interest. These are not things that you need to memorize, only be aware of. I do recommend, however, noting that Coxiella, Bartonella, and Brucella are the common pathogens in which we use serologies to make the diagnosis. Sometimes the diagnosis is made after the patient undergoes surgery and has the valve resected. Histology of the resected heart valve can provide diagnostic information. Listed here are various tissue stains that can provide clues to the microbiologic etiology of the infection. It's not important that you know the actual stain for the microorganism. It's important that you just understand this concept.
Sometimes infective endocarditis can be caused by pathogens that are emerging or undefined. Gene sequencing can be helpful in these situations. With gene sequencing, organisms are analyzed on the basis of nucleic acid sequence. Gene sequencing can improve the speed and accuracy of identifying microorganisms. There are several examples in the literature of infective endocarditis cases that have been defined by gene sequencing, such as leptotrichia, infective endocarditis, and others that are listed here. As an example of this technique, the illustration here shows that the gene sequences of strep mitis and strep pneumoniae differ by two base pairs using 16S ribosomal RNA gene sequencing technique. There are several mimickers of infective endocarditis. These are clinical conditions in which the patients present with signs and symptoms of infective endocarditis, such as fever, embolic events, thrombi on heart valves, etc., but do not have infective endocarditis. Examples include non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. Most often, these patients have malignancy, but this can also be seen with lupus, known as Lipman sachs endocarditis, antiphospholipid syndrome, and rheumatic heart disease. Other mimickers include Loeffler's endocarditis, as can be seen in hyper-eosinophilic syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, myxoma, which is a primary tumor of the heart, and vasculitis. Pictured here is a thrombus in the right atrium of the heart, as seen in Loeffler's endocarditis. In summary, blood culture negative endocarditis requires consideration of three major possibilities. First, that the patient has already received antibiotics, which have inhibited growth of the pathogen in blood cultures. Second, that the pathogen is fastidious or not able to be grown on routine blood cultures, in which case other diagnostic tools are needed, such as serology, histology, or simply enriching the culture media, and in some cases, even gene sequencing. And finally, that the diagnosis is not infective endocarditis, Rather, it is a mimicker of infective endocarditis.